Hey everyone, it's Sam here. Thank you for watching. So today I'm going to show how I've made this very cute little carrot patch gift box. So well, there's a tray and then there's six carrot gift boxes. And in each of these, there are four, I think it is, chocolate eggs. Open it up, you can see them inside. So the sides just, they kind of overlap each other. And then the last two have the hook and loop. And when it closes, you've got your little carrot top there. I think these would make great little table favours on their own. You could have someone's name on them. You could, you know, um, have little happy Easter signs or something on. Or they could be little gifts if you're doing a party. You know, you might want to, everyone can take one as they leave. Or you can use the tray and have Easter eggs in there. I've made different Easter eggs. I've got small little faceted ones. They would work with this. So, you know, you can change this up. You don't have to add the handle. I'm going to be giving this one to my friend's little boy. He's five, so he's going to love this. You don't need any specialty dies for the actual boxes and the tray, but I have used a die for the fencing here, and I'll show you that in the tutorial. So let's get started. Okay, so to make one of the carrots, you're going to need to cut yourself, if you want to do six, and you want six pieces of six by four and a half. Along the six inch side, you're going to score at one and a half, three and four and a half. And then along that four and a half side, you're going to score at four. I've then cut myself this green piece, which is five by two and a half. Again, you'll want six pieces. And to attach the, the tops there, I've got a little circle that I've punched as a half inch circle. So fold and burnish all of the score lines. And then from the score line up, you want to mark two and a half with a pencil. So, or just mark up three inches from the very bottom. It's probably easier to say that instead. So three, and again three, like so. And then very lightly, just draw a pencil line, like so, okay? Another score line I forgot to mention is where you scored at four, rotates, so that's now along the top, and you want to score. All these score lines they give you are just to the first score line. So half and one, then two and two and a half, three and a half and four, and then five and five and a half. So all those score lines, there we go, are just to that first score line there. I'm gonna now cut these first and then do the other score lines. So I think it'd be easier for you to see. So where you've got all of those little cut, um, score lines, just cut up all of them. The ones that are on the actual main fold, you can skip. So just cut up the ones that you've scored. And then remove the corner ones completely. Next, just fold up all the single squares. So we want to keep those. And then you can just cut away those double squares or those rectangle pieces. Next, what we're going to do is score from the top of each of these or the top corners of each of these little squares up to the pencil line for each end. So you want to treat each section on its own. OK, so working within this first section, you're going to score from the top here up to the end of that pencil mark. And then from this side up to the corner there where that pencil line is on that fold. We want to form four kind of triangles in each of these sections. So I'll do the first one and then I'll hold it up so you can see. So I always like to lay the stylus down first and then score. But I thought by removing all of these bits, it was easier for you to see exactly where I'm scoring. But you can do this scoring first and then cut those away if you want. So if I hold that up now, you can see just from the top corner of these little squares and then up to the pencil line. Okay. So just do that in all of those sections. OK, now you can rub out that pencil line. It was just there just for a guide. Next, we want to fold all of these score lines that we just made. So they're all going to be mountain folds. OK, so they're now all mountain folds. So these folds in between, they become valleys and you'll see once you fold those like that, you start to get that base of the carrot. So again, just fold them together. 
like so. So now if I bring all the square pieces together, so they all overlap each other, let's see, you get the bottom of your carrot. From this end, what you now want to do is just cut down to the top of the score lines there, just to the point. I've then got myself this circle, which is, I actually go around the outer edge, so it's one and a half, something around that size. And I'm just going to bring it right up to the top and draw around it. You want it to be able to reach from one side to the other of each of these sections. And then you want to cut those out. And then you just want to add a curve so they all curve inside. Next we can start sticking it all together. So I'm going to take my quick grab glue and start with this one here and just add your glue to one side like so and then just pinch that together. Make sure it's completely dry. And then keep that one pinched together. Whilst that's drying you can go on to the next one. So you should have something now that looks like this. Flip it over and just take off some of the bulk. I just hold that open. Can you see the difference? Just means you can get more treats inside. It's about a quarter of an inch now, still attached. And then bring it all around and you're going to stick the last two together. So I'm just going to add again my glue onto that last one. And then just bring it together like so and you'll be able to flatten it like so so the whole thing is flat and just give that now all some time to dry okay and then you can just seal off the bottom so just fold one side down add a little glue and then fold down another side and again until you've done them all and if you just take something and push it inside just to make sure that's all secure. Whilst that's drying a little bit more, I'm going to take this piece here, and I've got these vegetable scissors here, and I'm just going to cut down. So I've got about half an inch from the bottom there. These are a little bit blunt, but I don't mind it for this. It just adds to the, um, the character of the carrots. But you can just cut some tin foil, aluminium foil, whatever it is, and that will sharpen it. And then just do the very last two. There we go. Okay. And then just add some shape to that. And then I'm going to use my tweezers and then add some glue all along the inside here. Like so. Start off at the very end here and twist it around until you start to wrap it back on itself and just keep doing that until you get right to the end keep it nice and tight like so can leave that to dry for a minute okay and then just kind of pull bits of them out and curl some of them you might want to cut them so they're all kind of different lengths. You've got something like that. I'm then going to take my hot glue and just add a little inside. Just let it cool just slightly and then stick it in the middle of that circle. And it should stand up. Next, I'm going to take a hook and loop. You could use a magnet here if you wanted to. You might want to punch a hole and then maybe have some ribbon coming through the tops. I've done all kinds of similar boxes like this um, in all different themes. And I, some of them have been like hanging decoration. So it's up to you how you want to do it. Fold in one side and then fold the opposite over that. And then fold in the other two. And then just pop your 
hook and loop there and then I look at it side on because I want there to be like a nice even yeah that looks right just make sure that's really secure so I've just got these little chocolate eggs I'm just going to pop in I think it might be three or four there's four in there so four across six of them so there's plenty of chocolates and now this one I can just add some hot glue onto there and you don't have to add the circle but I do think it's just a bit neater and then attach that right on the top there <laughs> I think they're so cute and then just to add a little bit of color you can see they're a bit deeper orange at the bottom I've used the ripe persimmon and a blending brush there and then just flicked the color up into the shape there keeping it nice and dark on the very bottom and you could do this on these pieces as well maybe before you put it together ink it up a bit I'm happy with that. Okay, so that's all six of those. So if you want, just now add a little sentiment on the front. They'd be nice little table favours on their own. But I'm going to make the little carrot patch now for them to all sit in. So to make the box, you want to cut yourself a piece of eight and a quarter by five and three quarters. And you want to score at one and one eighth on all four sides. Now, the reason I've done one and one eighth is because when I bring up the side, the green's acting as the grass. And then I've cut these from this set, I'll show you in a second. And the top of this will hide just behind this bit here. I didn't want it coming up any higher. So that's why I've done one and one eighth. If you want to do one on all four sides and you haven't got anything like this, then that's fine. This is from, it's a little die here, and it's from my stamp and die set, which is just called Garden. You've got your dies there, and then you've got the stamp set here as well with all the different sentiments on it. So I've cut myself six of those. And what I did is I stuck them together like so. So I stuck the middle one over the top of these two here. So just add a little glue like so. Use your grid just to keep everything nice and straight. Like so. And then I'm going to snip off these end bits so it will look like this. And the width of that is six inches. So now with this one here, fold and burnish all of those score lines. And then just snip up these ones here along the long side, just to the first score line, like so. And then rotate, and again, like so. And then just take a little wedge off of each side. And then I'm just going to add my glue on the tab there, pop that under, and bring up the side and just make sure you've got a nice right angle there on the corner. And then just repeat that on all four corners. So now you've got your tray, you can decorate the sides. So like I said, they fit perfectly along the front and the back. I'm not going to put any on the side because I'm going to have my handle on there. So I'm just going to run my glue all along the bottom portion of these little fences, all along there and then just down each of those pieces. I've then got this shred here yeah, well, they call it decorative grass. And I'm just going to add some of it all in the bottom there. That's probably enough, actually. And I'm going to have them something like that. And then I've got these strips. I'm going to double it up a little bit. And then have them attached to the side. So I'll just stick them together. And then I'll let you know the length of it so that whole piece now is 
that's 12 it's about 19 inches so you don't have to even have the handle and i'm just going to attach it to the sides and then on the front i've got all these pieces here which are from papercraft essentials magazine or there might be a new one out by the time this one goes out but i thought yeah that one goes quite well let me just take these all off a minute a happy easter just on the front there and then like i said i'm going to just stick this in the middle either side There we go, so that's how it looks. I oh, think it's really cute. <laughs> and then just these are all just rest in there. So there's my little carrot patch gift boxes. You've got that tray which you can, you know, put all sorts in. Um, if you've made my faceted Easter eggs from last year, they would fit really nicely in this kind of tray style if you wanted to, you know, present it in a different way. But I think that's nice to have on the table. You could pop people's names on these they could be little gifts if you're doing a little easter party that people could take at the end you could have them you know like so i think it's lovely really really fun project so i hope you've enjoyed this one from me today as always i will try and link as much of the product that i've used in the description box below i'll also have popping up now all the other carrot tutorials that i've made there's something about carrots at easter like i said i just think they're really fun so you might want to go and watch those next and as i always say if you've enjoyed today but you're not subscribed click the subscribe button and hit the notification bell and that way you won't miss out on any future videos take care and i'll see you again soon bye